la pluie est trop tard. Oh, c'est un marrant. Oh, ça va revenir. Oh, excuse-moi, Didier. We've all seen those creaky old windmills on farms, and although they may seem about as low-tech as you can get, those old windmills are the predecessors for new modern wind turbines that generate electricity. The same wind that used to pump water for cattle is now turning giant wind turbines to power cities and homes. Okay, have a look at this wind farm in the California desert. A hot desert next to tall mountains, an ideal place for a lot of wind. Here's another one on the windy prairies of Wyoming. Now, today's wind turbines are much more complicated machines than the old prairie windmills, but the principle is the same. Both capture the wind's energy. Okay, here's how it works. First, a wind turbine blade works sort of like an airplane wing. Blowing air passes around both sides of the blade. The shape of the blade causes the air pressure to be uneven, higher on one side of the blade and lower on the other. And that's what makes it spin. The uneven pressure causes the blades to spin around the center of the turbine. On the top, there's a weather vane that's connected to a computer to keep the turbine turned into the wind so it captures the most energy. Now the blades are attached to a shaft, which only turns about 18 revolutions a minute. And that's not nearly fast enough to generate electricity by itself. So, the rotor shaft spins a series of gears that increase the rotation up to about 1,800 revolutions per minute. And at that speed, the generator can produce a lot of electricity. So, why are wind turbines so tall? Well, the higher up you go, the windier it is. More wind naturally means more electricity. And in many cases, larger turbines can also capture wind energy more efficiently. The blades can sweep a circle in the sky as long as a football field. Now what's really cool is that even a small wind farm like this one in Wyoming can generate enough electricity to power more than 9,000 homes. And larger farms can provide much more clean energy for our homes and businesses. When you look outside, what do you see? Sunlight? Water? Wind? Energy? We are surrounded by renewable resources, things that can be used and naturally replaced to be used again. Many renewable resources can be used as energy sources. Scientists have been working with renewable energy sources, things that are different from fossil fuels, like oil and coal, which are non-renewable. Popular renewable energy sources are wind, sunlight, water, wood, even corn and other plants. Let's take a trip around the state to discover how some renewable resources are used. First, we will head over to the Altamont Pass Wind Farm. Here you will find nearly 5,000 wind turbines. They look like giant windmills, don't they? These turbines have huge blades that catch the wind and spin. As the blades turn, they move a series of gears and shafts which are connected to a large generator. The generator converts this movement into electricity. Wind farms, like the one at Altamont Pass, are large enough to provide electricity for major cities. Our next stop is the Shasta Power Plant, located in Northern California. This plant produces hydroelectricity that means it uses the power of water to create electricity. The plant is located near Shasta Lake. When water from the lake is released from the Shasta Dam, it travels down a type of tunnel called a penstock, picking up speed as it goes. This fast-moving water goes through a turbine in the power plant, causing the turbine to spin. The spinning powers the generators which produce electricity. The water keeps moving through the plant until it falls into the river and flows along on its way. Let's leave this wonder of water power and dry off in the desert. 
The Mojave Desert is the home of the largest solar farm in the world. On this type of farm, the crop is solar power, which is taking the energy of the sun and turning it into energy that we can use. Solar cells capture sunlight and transform its energy into electricity. How much electricity? The solar farm in the Mojave Desert provides power to almost 150,000 homes. Some people think that solar farms are only helpful when the sun is shining. Well, energy can be stored so that it can be provided later, even at night. Not all renewable energy sources are above ground. We can get some energy from inside Earth itself. In California, this happens in places like the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire stretches along the edges of the Pacific Ocean, including the coast of California. Its name comes from the large number of volcanoes in the area and the plates underground that are constantly in motion. The activity from both volcanoes and moving plates creates heat and earthquakes. The name for heat that comes from inside Earth is geothermal energy. This type of heat can be captured and transformed into other types of energy. For example, geothermal energy warms the water that sits underground, turning it to steam. Geothermal plants capture this steam as it escapes from the Earth and use it to move turbines. As the turbines spin, they power generators which produce, you guessed it, electricity. In some areas of the world, the hot steam is not converted. Instead, it is used directly to heat homes and buildings. Our final stop on our renewable resources tour is this biofuel plant in Southern California. Biofuels are an alternative energy source made of organisms such as wood, animal waste, and plants. When these organisms burn, the energy produced is used to create electricity. Renewable energy sources have the potential to create energy, but there are also some concerns on how they might potentially disrupt natural habitats. From California to many other locations around the world, renewable energy sources can be utilized. As long as the wind blows, the water flows, and the sun shines, people can use these sources for energy. How have you or your community benefited from renewable resources? Are there things you could do at home to take advantage of renewable energy?